Maybe you guys have something to do with all the anxiety attacks I'm having. Hi, everybody. It's Paul. I'm here with my friend, Mark Quigley. Say hi, Mark. Hi there. We are in the archives room, and there are a lot of instruments here um, from our history. Um, and we're going to get into hollow bodies today, right, Mark? That's correct. All right. Well, here we go. Boy, this is the early McCarty hollow body. Look at this thing. It's beautiful. Ring's nice. That is beautiful. This is back when we were doing the moon inlays. Yeah, we haven't done those in a while. You know why? Why? Because the people kept ordering birds. Oh, yeah. And I always thought that would be, you know, five moon inlay orders to one bird order. Yeah. And it ended up being five bird orders to one moon inlay order. Yeah. The last holdout was Grissom's. You could get the um, uh, the moon inlays. I just thought a, a dot was kind of boring, so we kind of... I, I love the moon. That cop the copied the front of the head. Like, I, I wish we did them again. I think yeah. they're cool. They are cool. Do you remember when we were first putting them in, we had to rotate them into the right position? Yeah. Remember that whole thing? Because, and this is something that people don't notice about them, is that they they mimic the top of the, the headstock. Head By the way, here's one for you, Mark. So they have to line this it up. This and this are about the same curve. Yep. It was always three curves, right? That the moon is in this, this, and this. I just thought dots were boring at the time. I like this instrument. It's well, a ring. I know. That After thing is so loud. all those years. That was one of the very earliest ones, and, and we did them as satins. Yeah, we were sanding either acrylic urethane or polyester down. I think it was polyester. And, and they're really musical sounding yeah. instrument. The whole idea of this was to tie the top and the back together so that when you played really loud, it didn't get away from you. You know, the, these instruments go, Whoa, they have this thing when they're full arch tops where you can't play them really loud, but these could be played at ear blistering volume uh, musically and they had a beautiful resonant ring to them. If it was a thin piece of wood and that we were to steam it and bend it in this position, this is a pretty strong bend mm -hmm. and it would have trouble not cracking. What we figured out was that we could take this thick piece that was almost an inch thick and we could carve the back out and carve the top out and we could make it without bending it. And I, I I like that part. So, of it. so we wouldn't have been able to get our classic shape. Not with, that. With bending not. I don't think. To, I think to it would have had details or two. That severe. would have been impossible. Yeah. Um, I don't think some of this. I mean, I think we could have done it in this area, but yeah. to some certain areas, it would have really struggled. Gotcha. I mean, look, the instrument's very, very close to McCarty, except it's hollow with this big sound post, right? Right. The original ones came out with spruce tops which I liked because that was historic for hollow bodies. You had a spruce top and a curly maple back, and this one had a mahogany back in the very beginning. I think the one we had over here had a spruce top yeah, and a curly maple, maple back. back. And then people were so known for curly maple, they were like, we want you to have a curly maple top and a curly maple back. And I said, well, I'd rather have a spruce top because it rings a little bit better. And they said, no, we want two curly tops, one on the front and one on the back. And they started ringing just fine, so, you know. Right. It's kind of like the way it works. So, um, I don't know. I, I think that this harkens back to the McCarty's, just a hollowed out version of it. Yeah. You know, we made a thicker version. Do we have one here? We do. So, whose is this? Is this James's? James Zimmer's. That's James Zimmer's personal guitar. It made a thicker one. I remember the guitar player at Incubus was playing one of these. Yeah, Mike ones. Einziger yeah. played one for a long time. And um, I remember. We were having trouble selling the thicker ones, and then he picked one up, and then the orders came, but we'd already discontinued it, you know, which is kind of heartbreaking. It's a cool yeah. another spruce top guitar. Is there a curly maple one here? Uh, yeah, we have a hollow body too. So actually, Mark, who owns this one? Uh, some cool guy. <laughs> I think you own this guitar. <laughs> Boy, look at that. That's been my number one guitar for a long time. Very cool. So um, same same design, right? Same design. Same design. This, except and that's the, probably more of what we sell is the the twin maple. Well, the, yeah. The, <laughs> with this, you have two curly maple tops, one on the back and yep. one on the front, right? Double ten top. It's got the whole piezo system in it. 
And a lot of people don't know that there's a screwdriver adjustment in here for every single volume of every string on the piezo system, which is very cool. And they're very sensitive. You know, you can yeah. get the get the the string volumes dead right within a half a dB or so. How long did that take us to develop? We worked on it. Wynn and I worked on it for about eight nine months, and I remember figuring out that we could EQ each string differently. And so what we did was we added the base of this string to that to this piezo and then the bass note between here and here to this one and this one and so we changed the EQs per string so that the low end that you weren't getting with this pickup that was right here on the bridge would be EQ'd in. Right. So it was six separate EQs where we would add the low end of the string for the first octave of the string. It worked like a charm. And but you have to separately EQ every string. And th that's not typically done, but literally we're six separate amplifiers. That's why there's six screwdriver adjustments inside so you can adjust the volume of each one. Right. But we were EQing each string differently as well. The other thing I liked about it was that when we finally got it EQ'd right, we had six EQs and we had a set of Tannoy monitors. And when we finally got it right, we got everything EQ'd the way we want, we played it and we went, oh God, that sounds good. And we kept that EQ we kept from the day it was finished. That's been permanently the EQ that we've done. Nice. Well, everybody, it's Paul and Mark here in the archives room. Hope we come back here. I like coming in here. This is fun. Thank this you, Mark. Fun. Very Thank cool. You.